Good morning. Um, I didn't say you had to say all of them. Did I say that? I don't think so. Um, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, at IBM Cloud, Kubernetes is really the foundation of our cloud platform, both in the public cloud and in the private cloud. And I thought what I would do today in, in the few minutes that I have is just share some of the lessons that we've learned running Kubernetes at scale. Now, for a little bit of context, I'm going to focus in on our, our public cloud platform. In IBM Cloud, we have a managed Kubernetes service called IKS. Um, in that service, we're managing Kubernetes clusters on behalf of our users. Um, we've created hundreds of thousands of clusters since the service launched. Um, on average, we run tens of thousands of active clusters on a given day. Um, we're running that globally in six regions and 35 data centers around the world. We actually use Kubernetes to run Kubernetes. So we run thousands of Kubernetes masters on control planes uh, that are themselves running on Kubernetes. Uh, and we're running a really diverse set of workloads on Kube. We're running web and API uh, applications. We're running databases and data warehouses. We're running machine learning, blockchain, IoT applications, and high volume websites like weather.com. So a really diverse platform at running at large scale all around the world. Now, what problems did we face when doing this? And I think the core problem was, how the heck do we manage all this? You know, we have a 25-person SRE organization who's kind of on the front line running this service every day. Um, that team actually has been the same size since we launched our service. So how do they deal with that growth curve? You know, how do they survive the scale as more and more users come on board and start creating Kubernetes clusters? And I think there's kind of two key problems uh, that we had to tackle. The first was, how do we help the team manage the environment? And I think the key lesson here for us was to adapt the system, not change how the team worked. At IBM, we live every day on Slack. All of our kind of daily communication happens in Slack. And so one of the core things that we decided to do was build our operational system in the same place that our developers were working every day. So we built all of our operational tools into Slack. We created a set of bots so that we can do chat operations. Everyone can talk with each other in Slack, but we can also deploy updates, deal with incidents, uh, get access to the system, manage compliance and deployment. All of that can happen automatically using a set of bots that we've integrated into Slack. So that was our first lesson. Work where the team is. Don't make the team go to the system. The second big problem was, how do we know what's deployed and how do we update the system? In our Kubernetes service, on behalf of our users, we're managing the operating system, we're managing Kubernetes itself, we're managing a set of uh, capabilities inside the cluster that are running on Kubernetes, and of course, we're managing our own service, which is a collection of microservices for managing the system. And so the problems we had is first, how do we gain visibility into what's running in all of these clusters globally around the world in real time? And two, how do we deploy frequently, quickly, globally, and with fine-grained control over what we're deploying in individual clusters? Uh, when we started, we had a pretty traditional Jenkins-based CI-CD structure, and we found that as we scaled, that model didn't work. It was too slow to deploy. It was fragile. The rules about where you wanted to deploy things got really complex. So we built a different system to help us manage inventory and deployment at scale. And that system had kind of um, four key ideas in it. First, we switched to a pull-based self-updating cluster model. So instead of pushing changes into production, all the clusters running in the world could pull changes from a central system and update themselves. And that allowed us to do it very quickly. We could scale very easily and allowed us to have more control over what was running. The second idea was flexible rule and label-based configuration. If you have tens of thousands of clusters, you can't do anything on an individual cluster. You have to be able to do it on fleets of systems. And so using rules to decide where things ran and using labels within the environment gave us the fine-grained controls we needed over the system. Third, feature flags uh, for deployments. So we used the idea of feature flags to control what we wanted running in different environments. And we used a uh, feature flag system, we actually used LaunchDarkly, uh, to control what capabilities we would deploy in those clusters. And then finally, dynamic inventory. We needed the systems to report for themselves what was running in every cluster and uh, what capabilities were deployed in individual systems around the world. 
Let me show you a couple of examples. Uh, here's a picture of a cluster overview. So we can look at any cluster anywhere in the world and see exactly which services are running in that cluster, what versions of those services, and when they were last updated. We can flip it around as well and look at an individual microservice and understand where in the world is that running, which clusters is it on, and what versions are deployed in the fleet. So as we're doing updates, we can get a quick view of everything that's deployed in the world and where we might need to make changes. And then finally, um, here's a view of the rules. So instead of uh, pushing to all the clusters, we can actually define rules. Let's say in the Asia Pacific region, we want to run this version of the service. In another location, we can run something else. We can even get fine grained down to an individual service uh, or cluster that we want to deploy. So this system has really allowed us to manage um, a complex environment at large scale with incredible efficiency. We can do updates very easily. And we thought this was something that we could share with the world. And so today we're launching a new open source project called Razzy that takes this continuous delivery system that we've built and makes it available in open source. I encourage you to go to Razzy.io and check it out and uh, work with us on how we do microservice continuous delivery at scale. Thank you very much.